Hey guys, what is going on? It's Brycat23 here with X Trades. Today we're going to be going over some member selected tickers. We've got a few to choose from. One is Roku, the other is QS, Fubo, and FSLY. So some of these have setups that have already played out a little bit, which we'll go over as well, but other ones are in the middle of consolidation phases and have the potential for nice run-ups in the coming weeks. So first things first, we're gonna take a look at Roku. Now, there are a few things that I like about Roku's overall trend that I see forming. So um, first things first, it looks like we have a possible cup and handle, in my opinion. You could also make an argument for an inverse head and shoulders if you want, but I really think that this consolidation is more likely kind of the cup and handle portion and, and the low volume consolidation that you'll typically see and low price movement that you see with a handle. Could also argue for a flag, but at either rate, the price targets for these bullish setups are very similar. So it's not gonna make a material difference depending on how you essentially, how you name the pattern. So. Ultimately, it's a nice looking setup that we have in a really tight consolidation phase. So I think that we are due for a large price move. And again, judging by the height of this kind of swell of the height of the cup, I would also expect a large move because there is a lot that shows the height of the cup and the height of the consolidation pattern typically is directly correlated to the size of the breakout. So we're kind of consolidating sideways here, but as soon as we break out over this trend line resistance that we've been in since, since around March, I would expect a pretty large price move. So the, the cup and handle itself is probably about a $60 height. Uh, there's definitely some volatility because we had an earnings event and a couple wonky kind of gaps, but I would say 60 or $70 in height. And the percentage meeting price target, uh, according to the Bolkowski book, uh, suggests about a 60%, uh, maybe 65% percentage meeting price target for these patterns for a cup and handle specifically. It's a little lower for bull flags and a little higher for inverse head and shoulders, but really we're looking at something in that 60% meeting price target range. So ultimately, we take that you know, $60, $65 expected move and multiply that by 60% to get our projected move, which again, lands us in that $35 to $40 uh, range for our projected move, which would also coincidentally align closely uh, with our kind of next area of resistance which would be right around this 376 price zone. So you can see we were sensitive to this level in March. We were sensitive to it as a support in April, and then we rejected it in late April and it acted as an area of resistance. So assuming we break out in the near future around 350, then this area of 376, 375 would definitely be a good price target and an area where you would look to really take profit because it's a little difficult to say if price is gonna pass through that area with conviction or not in the near term. Obviously you could have some uh, higher price movement once you get past that, but obviously this is all dependent upon breaking out of this first trend line resistance and having this bullish breakout become realized. So. Ultimately, it's a really nice setup, and I do think that we're primed for a good, strong move, but just keep an eye for that volume. We're trading on really low volume because we haven't had any real price moves here, but I do think that we're getting ready for a really strong move and a large price move that could put us in the 370s uh, over, the next, over the next few weeks, I would say, judging by how long it's taken this cup and handle to form. Uh, and Roku typically is a fast uh, is a fast breakout uh, stock. So just something to keep an eye on here. Again, watch for breakout of this trend line. This is really what you want to see. And then once we break out, you should see a really large price candle and a large volume candle associated with it at breakout. And that should take us 
uh, take us towards our price target, and we should see that move continued uh, in the near term over the next over the next couple of weeks. But uh, overall, just bullish above this 340 price level. As you can see, we bounced here off a of dynamic support, and this area in general has acted as a, a horizontal area of support previously. So this is an area where I'd just be bullish above in the near term if prices do continue to consolidate and kind of wind downwards. Moving on to the next ticker, uh, FSLY is kind of in an interesting trend in the near term. There's not too much data to digest here because of the earnings report that came out kind of at the beginning of uh, May, which was obviously definitely didn't meet expectations. So uh, there was obviously a hard sell off and I think their CFO left, but at any rate, since then, prices really formed a nice, a nice uptrend or a really nice rising channel. But then we rejected these new highs where we were kind of looking to potentially fill that gap that was made at the earnings event. So really what happened here is we, we had a nice rising channel, but we got a bearish breakout out of it. So in the near term, unless we really break out of this, uh, this price range, this 48.5 price level with some conviction, I would be bearish until we break that level because with these channels, oftentimes you'll see rising channels break out to the downside. And when that does happen, they usually, it takes a little bit of time to play out, but it'll usually fall based on the height of the channel. So the good thing here, if you're, if you're a little more bullish, the good thing here is the channel itself was pretty tight. So you're not really looking at like a massive price move that you know, you'd expect to see to the downside. It's really only about $3 in height, this channel. So really we're looking at a two or $3 move to the downside based on the trend. And, and there's obviously a support zone that should come in here and act as a support that has confluence with that two or three dollar price move to the downside. So really this is kind of where I'd look for uh, either support and seeing that this trend has fully played out because I wanna see this trend played out. This is kind of like a low volume retest almost, right? So there's not too much volume stepping in here until this last candle of the day really. But this is kind of like a low volume retest of this trend line. And you know, there's not a whole lot of buyers stepping up uh, we're definitely trading below average volume on the hourly, but at any rate, we could see prices kind of recede and fall back down and at least test this 46 price level or potentially this 45 price level. So I really wouldn't look to, to long FSLY until we get above this 48.5 level, because that's definitely kind of the area where we need to break through to get some bullish sentiment and to also potentially fill a gap towards that pre-earnings price level. Uh, additionally, once we reach this price target, if we do reach it, uh, that's kind of just a sign that the pattern has had its time to play out and we can begin to form a new bias. So we can let the buyers and sellers determine really where the stock uh, should be trading at in the near term after the trend has played out. So I wouldn't wanna get into it preemptively uh, without this trend having played out. So I'll either look for it around 45 and watch for a new price trend to develop, or I'd look for it once we break that 48.5 price level with some good volume. So I, FSLY is really in more of kind of a no trade zone for me. Uh, but again, I would expect it kind of to fall in the near term just based on the breakout of this rising channel and the kind of low volume retracement we're seeing but I would be long once we break above this 48.5 price level. Moving on to Fubo. Fubo is an interesting uh, ticker as well. And it actually recently broke out of an inverse head and shoulders. So we obviously know that those are bullish setups. Uh, we have the left shoulder here, the head, and then the right shoulder, which was also higher than the left shoulder, which I definitely like to see. You get a little more bullish on the right side when you're getting to getting ready to lean into that breakout. So it's nice to see a little more conviction on the buy side uh, when that right shoulder forms. And then we obviously got a huge candle 
and some really strong volume associated with it at the breakout and made a really strong move, really pretty much up to our price target. So this is kind of a difficult uh, stock to analyze because we've already broken out of this, of this trend of this inverse head and shoulders. Um, and we've seen about, you know, a, a $4 move essentially from this stock. We, we ran all the way to 26.4 and my price target based on the $6 height of the pattern and the percentage meaning price target being about 70% uh, was 26.3. So we've really kind of realized the full move of this, of this inverse head and shoulders. So now we kind of have to let buyers and sellers determine kind of a new pattern and a new trend. And we could form, again, another bullish consolidation pattern in this range, uh, as long as we hold above this kind of 23.7 price level, because that was a nice base that we formed after we made this strong price move. And, and it really kind of formed uh, just a good area to bounce off of and make that run for that full price target of the inverse head and shoulders that we had formed. So again, there's, I really don't think that there's much of a trade in Fubo either, but I think it's a great example of a really nice pattern that played out just as you would expect, a really nice inverse head and shoulders, pretty clear the, the shoulders and the head in this case, and then a really clear indication of a strong volume breakout and strong move in price. And then a really nice base that formed and, and consequential move upwards towards that price target, fully reaching the price target. And then once that happened, kind of sellers and profit taking happened and prices retreated back to this area of support or the area of base that was formed uh, after the initial breakout. So again, I would still be bullish above 2370 just by design. Uh, based on this move that we've seen and, and based on the fact that we're holding this area um, on this on this retest, on this lower volume retest. So I would still be bullish above 2370, but right now there really just isn't kind of a, a strong risk to reward trade that you can take at this point, unless you're really just kind of hoping for a bounce from 2370 up into this uh, 26, three, 26, four price level again. So again, that would be a much more speculative play. Um, and it would just be kind of assuming the bounce off of this support goes all the way to that, uh, 26, four price level. Um, so I would, I would essentially let, let more time and, and let this pattern develop a little more fully before, uh, taking a position here and then moving on to QS. This is a setup that I like a lot. It's a, a falling wedge breakout has already kind of happened. And it's a really nice, just bullish setup overall. Um, essentially the height of this wedge is, is pretty large. We're looking at like an $8 height. Um, I definitely don't expect that full price target to be reached, but uh, I do think that there's, there's potential for a strong move after breaking this longer term bound trend. And again, just seeing the smaller, essentially the consolidating prices within this wedge uh, and the sellers losing strength over time and the buyers gaining some strength relative to the sellers is a really nice thing to see uh, on, if you're having a bullish bias. So definitely nice to see. Uh, we've got a few price levels mapped out here uh, that I'm going to talk about a little bit. And again, based on essentially the height of the pattern and the fact that we got this bullish breakout, uh, I'm going to kind of talk about what I think these price levels mean and, and what they could potentially bring. Um, so again, we have about an eight, $8 height of this wedge uh, from where it first formed and falling wedges, you know, you're looking at a 60 to 65% meeting price target. Um, so really I'm looking for, you know, a four and a half to $5 move. And, uh, we broke out right at this 26 price level. Uh, and that would really put our price target at essentially, you know, 26 plus about four and a half or 4.8 in this case, uh, dollars, which really brings us right to this 30.8, 30.9 price level. 
So this is kind of that golden area. And, and again, our price target has confluence with, uh, with a large area of resistance, which you would expect. And, uh, and essentially, this would be kind of my full price target based on the pattern and the breakout. I would definitely allow it time to happen. I do think it will take some time for this to happen, uh, but it can move quickly once we do get some volume in here. We did have much better volume today on this, on this kind of candle off of support, off of this 25, 25 level. But, uh, but again, we're gonna have another sticky zone in there right at that 28.5 price level. So that's one area that you definitely wanna watch. And hopefully we're able to break through that with some conviction. Now that again, we've, we've kind of broken this trend line resistance, this will really be the next area that we, we look to test. And then hopefully we're able to test that 30.8 price level and ultimately price target uh, in the coming week. So I'd really like to give it uh, essentially a solid three or four weeks uh, for us to really try and make a run for, for these price levels, uh, just based on the consolidation pattern in the near term. So again, I think that we could have a really strong move here over the coming weeks, uh, but I really would keep an eye for that 286 as that could be kind of an intermediate price target. But my full price target based on this trend would really be closer to that 30.8, 30.9 price target based on the height of the wedge and this area of resistance in the wedge where I really don't think we'll be able to break by that unless there's some serious shift in sentiment around uh, QuantumScape. But uh, in the near term, obviously we broke out of this wedge, which is great. But uh, you definitely have to keep an eye on these areas of support as well, because uh, you can't just be bullish forever based on a breakout of a falling wedge. So really, I'd have to, I'd have to see the ticker stay above this 25.3 uh, price level, where we formed a really nice base uh, after a really strong price move back on May 26. So I'd have to stay above this 25.25, 25.3 price level for me to stay bullish on this. Uh, in the in the near term, essentially, for me to remain bullish. But again, I think this is a really high quality setup uh, and has a good potential uh, reward uh, for the risk that you're taking on. So I like the setup in QS. Uh, I definitely like the setup in Roku. Uh, I don't think that there are really too many uh, strong risk to reward trades that you could make in Fubo and FSLY. Uh, without kind of losing some conviction, uh, just because again, I don't think that there's much to go with from a setup perspective there. So it'd be difficult to find a good risk to reward trade uh, as patterns have either played out or are kind of in the midst of playing out. Uh, so I don't think that there are strong risk to reward setups in either Fubo or FSLY, but I like QS and Roku. So if you guys have any questions, as always, please feel free to just reach out. Uh, you can leave a comment below uh, or you can just message me in the server. But thank you guys so much for joining and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.